Hello students, this is Rekha working as associate professor in Government Science College. So in the previous lecture we discussed about the macronutrients and in this lecture we shall study about micronutrients. What are micronutrients? So micronutrients are the nutrients required by the plant in less quantities hence they are called as trace elements or minor elements. They are required in less than 10 millimolar per kg of dry matter. Some of the important micronutrients are iron, manganese, copper, zinc, molybdenum and boron. So let us discuss these micronutrients about their source, functions, deficiency symptoms, diseases and the corrective measures. So first let us take up the iron. So iron is fairly present in the form of its oxides giving red or brown color to the soil. In well irrigated areas ferric compounds are predominantly found and in waterlogged soils ferrous compounds are formed. The availability of iron in plants increases with the acidity and it is decreased by the addition of phosphates. It is absorbed in ferric state but metabolically it is active in ferrous state. So coming to its function, though iron is not a constituent of chlorophyll but yet it is closely concerned with it and probably plays a role as a catalyst. So iron also acts as a catalyst and electron carrier in respiration. So it is a constituent of cytochromes, ferredoxin, catalase, peroxidase, fluorochrome etc. So it is an activator of nitrate reductase and aconitase enzyme. So the deficiency symptoms are as follows. So first one is intervenal white chlorosis. So that means the young leaves are always severely affected and the principal veins may remain green in color. So in extreme conditions, scorching of the leaf margins and tips may occur. So coming to its diseases, so it induces the lime induced chlorosis commonly seen in the fruit trees but sometimes it is found in beetroot, spinach and cereals. So it can be corrected by using the ferrous sulfate along with the lime as foliar spray. The chelated iron compound such as FEDTA, it gives a very good response for iron deficiency. So you can see the diagram with and without the iron, you can make out the color differentiation in the leaves. So next important micronutrient is manganese. See like iron, this manganese, it seen in the soil in the form of its oxide namely the oxidized form manganese dioxide. So it is usually present in the form of trivalent and tetravalent oxides. Its solubility increases with the increased acidity and in strongly acid soils. It is frequently present in toxic concentrations. So it may be one of the chief causes of crop failure due to soil acidity. So coming to its function, it acts as an activator of a number of enzymes, especially which are involved in respiration and nitrogen metabolism. So it is essential for the formation of chlorophyll. It decreases the solubility of iron by oxidation. Hence, abundance of manganese leads to iron deficiency. So, deficiency includes the chlorosis of leaves, dead tissue spots over the leaf, 
root system is often poorly developed and badly affected grain formation is reduced so some common diseases caused due to its deficiency are first one is gray speck in oats barley wheat rye and maize second one is pahla blight of sugarcane which is mainly you can see the chlorotic spots as long trees in the young leaves and later the chlorotic spots turn red and they join with one another they coalesce to form the long streaks from which the lamina may split third one is marsh spot of pea brown or black spots or cavities develop on the internal surface of the cotyledons fourth one is the speckled yellow of sugar beet so it is characterized by intervenal chlorosis in the leaves and the leaf margin may curl upward over the upper surface of the leaf so how to correct this manganese deficiency so foliar spray of manganese sulfate and half the quantity of lime it can it can be used to correct this deficiency so next one is the copper so the major source of copper in the soil is the natural deposit of chalcopyrite so coming to its function it is a constituent of a number of enzymes and also it is essential for photosynthesis respiration and carbohydrate nitrogen balance which is commonly known as cn balance so some of the deficiency symptoms include the general reduction of reproductive and vegetative growth leaves have necrotic tips and margins and in the cereals ears are particularly affected with reduced grain formation so the diseases are the important diseases caused due to the copper deficiency are first one is exanthema or die back of fruit trees it is commonly found in citrus plum apple and pear and secondly reclamation disease it is also called as white dip white tip disease and it is found in cereals oats beet and legumes the tips of leaves become chlorotic followed by a failure of the plants to set seed so it can be corrected by applying 5 to 10 kg per hectare of copper sulfate to the soil or 0.1 to 0.2 percent of copper sulfate foliar spray with half the lime give good results so the next micronutrient is zinc so like copper it is also found in the soil in very small quantities and largely results from the concentration and addition from the growing plants and the added residues so ferro magnesium minerals magnetite biolite and hornblende are the natural source of zinc so weathering action of these minerals releases weathering means powdering powdering of these minerals releases the zinc which is adsorbed to the soil so it plays a vital role in the biosynthesis of auxin rna synthesis and it forms an important component of enzymes like carbonic anhydrogenase alcohol dehydrogenase lactic dehydrogenase glutamic dehydrogenase alkaline phosphatase carboxypeptidase etc it has also been found essential for carbon dioxide evolution and utilization so coming to its deficiency symptoms so leaves show chlorosis necrosis rosetting premature shedding so in case of monocots the upper leaves become white and in case of dicot the lower leaves show chlorosis so leaf margins are distorted the shape of the leaf margin is changed it becomes twisted or wavy and it gets a sickle shape 
structure. So the diseases of zinc deficiency are chyra of paddy, chyra disease of paddy. The entire seedling, it looks brown due to chlorosis and ultimately dies. Second one is white bud of maize. The unfolded new leaves are often pale yellow to white in color. And there is an appearance of light yellow streaks between the veins of older leaves followed by white necrotic spots. Third one is rosette of fruit trees. It is also called as little leaf. It is caused due to the zinc deficiency, yellow mottling of leaves, reduction in the leaf size with rosette appearance. So last one is Frenching of citrus. So initially, yellow spots develop between the veins. So leaves become progressively smaller and develop chlorophyll at the basal end of the midrib. So rarely dieback may be seen. So it can be corrected by applying the zinc sulfate to the soil or zinc sulfate coupled with half the content of lime as foliar spray. Next one is molybdenum. So molybdenum is found widely distributed in small amounts in soil and plants but its higher concentration occurs in mineral oils and coal ashes. So it is found in soil in three forms namely the ions of molybdate in soil solution as an exchangeable ion adsorbed to the soil missiles and in non-exchangeable form in soil minerals, organic matter and coal ashes. So the functions of this molybdenum is partly known. It is an important constituent of nitrate reductase system. It acts as an activator of some dehydrogenases and phosphatases. It acts as a cofactor in the synthesis of ascorbic acid and is necessary for the nodule formation in legumes for fixing atmospheric nitrogen. So the deficiency symptoms are chlorosis in the form of mottling, necrosis of leaf tissue and failure of grain formation in oats. So it deficiency, it produces two important disease. First one is whip tail of brassica. So here the symptoms begin as a translucent areas near the midrib which become ivory tinted or necrotic. The leaf margins become curled upwards and before the death of the growing point, the leaf elongates and the lamina remains suppressed. The second one is scald of legumes. So the leaf shows paling, wilting, marginal, rolling or scorching. So the deficiency of molybdenum is commonly found in the herbaceous plants, legumes, etc. which can be corrected by the application of 0.5 to 1 kg of sodium or ammonium molybdate per hectare. So the last one is the boron. Boron occurs in rocks and marine sediments. It is absorbed in the form of borate ions and has some sort of antagonism with calcium, potassium and other cations. So it is necessary for the translocation of sugars. It is involved in the reproduction and germination of pollen grains. It tends to keep the calcium in soluble form. It acts as a regulator of potassium ratios. So the deficiency of this boron leads to the shoot apices to die resulting in lateral branching. Leaves become coppery, brittle and curl inwards. Flowering is retarded and root growth is stunted. So to summarize the minor mineral nutrients, so iron acts as a cofactor of cytochromes required for chlorophyll synthesis. So the deficiency leads to the chlorosis in young leaves. So the manganese, it is one of the element which is essential for the formation of chlorophyll and activator of many enzymes results in chlorosis and necrosis. Copper acts as a cofactor for photosynthetic and respiratory electron transfer protein and other enzymes 
and the deficiency leads to the wilting of the young leaves the terminal bud wilting dark green leaves versus necrosis so zinc acts as an enzyme cofactor and its deficiency results in rosette growth leaves become small and the molybdenum its function is nitrogen fixation and nitrate reduction intervenal chlorosis and necrosis takes place and the boron mediates calcium utilization nucleic acid synthesis and lignin synthesis so the deficiency results in the twisting of the leaves and the stalk dies at the bud condition so to summarize this topic although the micronutrients are required in small amounts the minor nutrients are essential for plant growth and these nutrient act as catalyst in chemical reactions and it is possible to have toxicities of trace elements as well as deficiencies so a particular trace element deficiencies are generally restricted to specific soil types or localities thank you for listening my lecture